Wow, yes, I promised you last week that we are going to have a part two, a sequel. Yes, last week we talked about what is marriage and who is a wife. Today, I have the men in the house. We are going to find out why do men marry? Mm. Why do they decide to marry? Kra. They too, is it because of the biological clock? Is it because of society? Do they even understand marriage? Do they get prepared for marriage? Do they know what marriage is all about? Are they committed? Well, before it sounds like uh, I'm, I'm, I'm crucifying them before it even starts. <laughs> well, you're welcome to the standpoint today. We are going to find out why do men marry and who is a husband? Let me say thank you to GTP for my cloth. This is new style. Sold for me beautifully by Ophelia Crossland Design. Thank you so much to them. My hair and makeup by Inshilo, the one and only Inshilo. Thank you so much to her. My beads by Sun Beads and all. And I'd like to say thank you to Power Cosmetics for giving us that makeup product. We'll take a break when we come back. Why do men marry and who is a husband? We'll be back. Welcome back to watching The Standpoint. If you just joined us today, we are going to do a sequel to what we discussed last week. We want to find out, why do men marry? Mm. When I sent the message around, <laughs> almost every woman <laughs> said, yes, they want to know, why do men marry? Today, we'll find out I have three men in the studio uh, from different backgrounds, and they are going to tell us why, why men marry get married but let me say thank you to abn tv who rebroadcast this program on sky channel 195 which is across western europe parts of canada and asia and also virgin tv on channel 842 in the united kingdom our website www.thestandpoint.com.gh is powered by dream oval our youtube channel is very very active and so you can subscribe anytime and have a review of any of the programs that you've missed. Thank you to Gogot Yogurt, Awake Purified Water, Royal Drinks, Yacht Cleaning Services, House of Food, and of course, Cake Technique for supporting us also. In the studio today, my audience, I have ladies from Peculiar Women of Substance visiting us. <laughs> And then, of course, my good old GIJ representatives from GIJ here, Ghana Institute of Journalism. <laughs> but on my panel, at my stream left, I have Mr. Alfred Adote Kofi. He's a banker at ADB. Welcome to the standpoint. <laughs> Next to Alfred, I have Mr. Franklin Ajete. Principal of the British International School. <laughs> well, I must declare my, he's my brother, you know. <laughs> we grew up together, okay. And next to him is my boss, my father, my everything, my counselor. And uh, people will come and, you know, ask you questions like, okay, so what has Gifty has been confiding in you about? <laughs> he's a Reverend Canon Patrick Okaija Botier. He's a parish priest. St. Andrew Anglican Church, Aboso Okain. Abose Okain. Abose Okain. <laughs> Gentlemen, welcome to the standpoint. Yes. Uh, it's an all male uh, panel now. But let me stand with you, frankly. <laughs> okay. How long have you been married? Um, almost getting to 14 years. 14 years. Yeah. Why did you get married? Well, um, I got married because. I thought, I felt I needed a companion, you know, a partner, a friend, somebody who I could share the rest of my life with. Um, um, also, I, I wanted to have children so that one day when I'm not, um, I'm no more, um, I've left a legacy behind. And also for the fact that I need consistency, you know, um, um, in, in, in um, getting compassion from somebody, um, 
um, what would I say, friendship, um, somebody I can share everything about me with, it has to be one particular person. It so can't for be you, everybody. You re a lot of thought went into deciding. So many things, so okay. many things. I'll get back to you. Alfred, you are divorced. Yeah. What went into getting married the first time? For me, it got to a time I was asleep, and then this thought starts running. That woke me up. Charlie, you have to start planning. Mm -hmm. So then I was looking out for friendship, somebody who accept me as I am, because I am a human being and we flaws. Mm -hmm. You see, somebody who can tell you in the face, maybe if you do this that way, mm -hmm. things will be better for, for us. So it starts from the companionship level, and then I, I was I was looking also at procreation. Okay. I love to see kids. Yeah. You see, though at their tender age, we have all accepted they can be troublesome. But and you we people, can do away you with people them. People don't, don't <laughs> leave us alone with them to face it. When they reach the, the, the stages where they can run after you, then you become daddy. <laughs> it, it, that's nature. <laughs> <laughs> Bishop, Bishop will talk. Uh, okay. Yeah. We so hear I passed for the companionship, then I was looking at procreation, mm -hmm. then the life support. Okay. Life support as also. Mine, I can say there was no that much pressure. Mm. The pressure was from within. For, okay. You understand? How long Before were you married for before you divorced? Five years. Five years. Yeah. Okay. So if all these things went to do it, how come you didn't survive it? <laughs> a lot of things went in there. I'll be back sure. in it. Let me come to <laughs> all right. Canon. All right. Okay. Canon, uh, how long have you been married for? Uh, 14 years. 14 years. Yeah, August 4th. October was 14. Yeah. October was yeah, 14. 16th October. Okay. Uh, three days for my, for my wife's okay. birthday. All right. Let's talk about you before we come today. <laughs> <laughs> hey, three days before your wife's birthday. Yes. You got married. Yes. Hey, Bishop, why didn't you wait and marry on her birthday? No, uh, no three days to her birthday. Uh, three days to her birthday. Her birthday, not mine. Oh, her, her birthday. birthday. Yeah. Oh, it's okay. all about her. Marriage is about, wedding is about the woman. So. Can you? Are you sure? Oh, yes. Okay. The so why? The was targeted at her birthday. <laughs> Alfred, I know I like you. <laughs> it's true, it's true. The Saturday, the Saturday was the wedding. Sunday, ten seven. Then the Monday, which is the birthday. <laughs> Karen, why did you marry? Hmm. That's a very interesting question mm -hmm. to ask him. But be, well, being a priest, I I fortunately married after being ordained. Oh, okay. Yes, because I went. You to were a, a priest before. Yes, I mean that's a peculiar situation. So because, marriage is not a requirement for being a priest. Um, well, I in was, the Anglican. I was left after the hook. I mean, it was an exceptional case. Okay. Uh, because I had then finished school after an engineer at the age of twenty-seven went to the priesthood. After twenty-five years going, twenty-seven years going to the ministry. Ordained after three years, I mean, that rigorous training. And then the pressure started mounting. I mean, I had no clue. I mean, even after 30, I was not even thinking about marriage. Then people started introducing themselves, and people were introduced to me, and <laughs> my mother was putting pressure on me, and my bishop was like, you can't be a priest if you are not married. But he has been doing it in a very subtle manner. Mm. So then I decided I'm going to marry. I met my wife six months we married. Mm. We never knew each other before. We never crossed each other's path before. I mean, we've not met anywhere before. She came to a program and she saw a friend of mine. We talked and mm, upon conversation, you have nobody, I had nobody, so I want to marry you. She said, I'll marry you. Just like that? Yes. First? Yes. And if my wife, I'm not sure, my wife will be watching and she'll be laughing. And, and so I told her, I want to marry you and I'll marry you on your next birthday. Oh, so full. Yeah, that's it. Like, really? Oh, yes. And you we, met the lady then? Was, yes. was there a spiritual inclination? Um, not necessarily, but I believe God was working this way out. Uh, because mm. I didn't, I met her once somewhere, but we did, I didn't know she was, she was the one. She also saw me. When I saw her, I felt something, but I didn't know she was the one. <laughs> I, 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 there was some funny, very funny feeling. Uh, mm -hmm. But that was it, because I was doing to do a program. Okay. And it was, I think, after four months, then we, when I saw her, we were talking, it came up that she was the one who was there. Oh, so, so there was divine connection. I believe so. I felt that was the one. Chai. And Love is a feeling you feel when you feel you are feeling something you've never <laughs> felt before. We'll be back. <laughs> Thank you.
Welcome back to the standpoint. Why do men marry? At least we've seen or we've heard why the three men on my panel this evening got married. We'll get into much details very soon. But again, I say thank you to GTP for my clothes. My dress was made for me by Ophelia Crossland Designs, beat by Sun Beats and all hair and makeup by Inshilo. Inshilo is at Colibu right opposite, well, um, yeah, opposite to the Colibu Teaching Hospital. When you get there, you ask about Inshilo, they will direct you there. Papa Cosmetics provides us with uh, makeup products and of course, makeup and more. Did the makeup for my panelist. Um, hmm. Alfred, what did you go in? What kind of expectation did you go into the marriage with? Based on the friendship level we have developed, I was expecting same, do I know with time, you get to know other attributes of your partner, hmm. which might not have uh, crop up during maybe dating courtship mm. or whatever so for me i wasn't expecting much mm. all i want to be is always happy and maybe smiling one that is there i think the rest challenging to come mm. but we have to surmount it and move along so really? i wasn't expecting you didn't have any expectations going in there i did not go into it with that much expectation i went to into marriage to be happy living life together doing stuff together and the rest mm. benefits will follow mm. yeah. thank you what about you did you understand marriage yes um at the time that um i wanted to get married i understood it and um, i made a decision um i had expectations you know and um my expectations were um respect you know and a no turning back so once I put my head in there, that's it. When I, once I decide that this is the woman I'm going to be with, that's it. So if she comes, whatever flaws she comes with, I'm going to embrace everything and, then, and try and turn it around because I have a nature where um, whatever is not right before people, I go for it and, and make a change for people to see what I've been able to do. So I love this transformation thing. So for me, marriage was finding that person but funny enough, when I met my partner, I wasn't sure. I didn't know she was the one. Mm -hmm. You know, whether she was in London, I was in London. We all came for holidays. We met at, we arranged to meet at, uh, meet at Frankie's um, restaurant. And then the next time we arranged to meet at my house. And then when she came, um, my mom was going to serve the workers, those who were uh, mixing concrete here and there. And then she took the tray off my mom. And then my mom looked at me and said, that's the one. <laughs> Alfred, she went there with a purpose. <laughs> she, she a purpose, purpose for a woman. <laughs> she knew what she was. But, but Gifty, there's one thing I like to say. There's, there's something that um, um, I, I'm, I actually made a promise to myself and um, I also put something in place. I said to my wife, in this marriage, I would want respect to reign. I wouldn't want you to insult me. I wouldn't want to insult you too. I wouldn't want to kiss my teeth at you or cut my eyes at you. I wouldn't want us to sleep over our anger, you know, because I made that choice. Because for me, coming from um, um, a broken home, I don't want that for my children. So I don't want to get into that marriage and divorce. And my mom had gone through a divorce before. So she said to me, Frankie, it is not easy when you go through a divorce. Your conscience is very difficult. Try your best. Pick that woman and stay with that woman. And probably that's one of the reasons why I didn't marry earlier because I didn't want to have a baby along the way and not marry the woman. So I, t I said that to my wife. And up to now, we're almost 14 years. We've not insulted each other. It's not like she doesn't do anything that upsets me. She does. I do. But we talk about it. And we don't sleep over it. And we're always fine with respect. Nobody has ever come to tell me, oh, I think your wife is cheating or something. Neither has anyone, anyone gone to tell my wife um, that I think Frankie is doing it because we don't give ears to it. Everything is between the two of us and we're always happy. And we, we have two children. <laughs> now, it's to the glory of God. To the glory of God. But Canon, do you think that you, 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 you're, you're a priest, you're a reverend minister, you've 
superintendent over many marriages. You are a counselor. I mean, people, you know, bring their issues to you. But do you think men really understand what marriage is about? In Africa, and let me come to the issue now, and that's what I want you to address. Why, in the general sense of the world, people marry? Mm. Especially within the context of Africa, and more precisely, being guns as we are sitting here. Mm. Yeah, among the guns... You know, yeah, I, I, I realized this That's morning, what I wanted to say. This morning, that all, all three of you are that, married, uh, guns. And all of us married, I'm very sure, after 30 years. Yes. And, and that is interesting. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know how you did the selection, but... I, uh, you know... Uh, when you were, I'm sure you were, was the last person you considered. Yes. Uh, uh, <laughs> and you see, among the guns, a man will not go to a woman's house to marry him or her. Your father will marry for you. So in the Ghana tradition called engagement or traditional marriage, you don't see men at the marriage ceremony. You see only women. Mm -hmm. Your father will look at you and say, I am about to leave this world. You are my next generation. And you will continue the family lineage by marrying. Mm -hmm. So then if men are not made to understand the essence of marriage, we will have a lot of problems. So when people come to me, one of the guys that I ask, why do you marry or why do you want to? You know what he said? He said, Father, I believe that I've come to a point of living not alone, but to live with somebody. And I've found a woman I feel is worth keeping. And that understatement, that statement, worth keeping, is the bottom line. That if you are going to marry somebody and you are not sure the person is worth keeping, you have no business marrying the person because it's a long time decision. But unfortunately, we don't prepare the people very well so far as our world is concerned. And that is where the problem is. And <clears throat> I must add that um, uh, Reverend Cannon has a traditional background, you know. So um, that maybe one of these days we'll do a one-on-one -on -one with him, you know. His background, interesting background from, from priesthood to priesthood. <laughs> from a different priesthood to priesthood, you know. So he, he has both backgrounds. But Alfred, you were not nodding when, you know... Um, Canon was talking. You know, one of the reasons why, you know, this is a women's program, we did this program, is the fact that consistently women feel that when men marry, you know, they, they get want to have a wife and still be a single guy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Just, yes, I'm a response. Everybody knows this is my wife. But then, give me my respect, yes. I have the kids, but I still want to be free. I want to fly, you know. Like a butterfly, do everything. Men, you know, I'm a man. Yeah. So it's you, the woman, who has to make the marriage work. It's not really the responsibility of the man. And so we have many homes where wives are hurting. Alfred, yeah. what is the problem? Uh, Gifty, to a larger extent, your assertion is true. I think the transformation transforming from singlehood to a marriage life sometimes is there's a gap i don't think it's been well addressed because to marry you start counseling and sometimes counseling most of the topics discussed does, does not really focus on the transition mm. from that angle you are now to where you want to be the focus is rather on how things are going to be. Mm. But if you don't get there correctly, things might not go well. When you settle down, you are married, and kids are coming, life can still not be the same way. Mm. You see, if you want life to remain the same way, then there should be a consensus between the two of you. Mm. But most often, one is out there, and one is in there. Mm -hmm. Sometimes not for maybe tangible reasons, but for social reasons that some can be skipped. Mm. You see. But the other challenge of men is that at the initial stages, you know this is how I am. Mm -hmm. You see. After marriage, you want a sharp contrast of me. It's difficult. So is it a problem of lack of communication and understanding each other that in this journey called marriage, there are changes. Priorities may change as you go along. Yeah, if you said it all. I think the lack of communication and understanding. Because as children come in, circumstances change. And men have to also adjust to the change. Mm -hmm. Because by default, the women are able to adjust very quickly. Mm. 
but the men sometimes it takes forever to adjust <laughs> Mm -hmm. And I think that is, you know, I started by saying there's a gap somewhere. I think mm -hmm. we need to address that gap, mm -hmm. especially more, and focus should be given to post-marital counseling. Yeah. That is lacking mm -hmm. in this uh, setup. Kano. We put emphasis, that is e emphasis mm -hmm. more on the pre-marital right. counseling. And after that, they leave you to be on and your own. And unfortunately, you see, after that, you see, first you've been given a script to read. That is pre-marital counseling. You read it. Mm -hmm. Now you are acting, and that is where you need the experienced ones to be behind you more. If can't, if counseling after marriage is very giving, is giving serious attention, it would um, and um, it will prevent families from either the ladies and or the the gentlemen's and from coming into the marriage, because when these doors are opened, now spouses begin to listen to their family side mm. you see instead of maybe going back to the church or seeking counseling among others so mm. for that reason I, I i can accept men are lacking in that area mm. and something has to be done let me take a break when we come back Fra frankie i want to find out from you getting married and staying in uk and the kind of life that you had or you have with your wife would you say would have been different if you had married in ghana and stayed in Ghana with your wife. We'll be back. To the standpoint, the standpoint is also aired on ABN TV or Sky Channel 195 across Western Europe, parts of Canada and Asia. We are also on Virgin TV 842 in the United Kingdom. Our website www.thestandpoint.com.gh is powered by Dream Oval. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, that's the standpoint. Follow us on Twitter, Facebook, on Instagram as well. Thank you to Go Got Your Got, our wet purified water. House of Foods, Cake Technique, Yep Cleaning Services, and, of course, Royal Drinks for supporting us. Now, Bra Frankie. Hello. Sister Gifty. <laughs> <laughs> Would you say that life as a couple in UK mm. is different? Because, yeah. you know, out there, um, you cook, she cooks, yeah. right? You both clean. Yes. You take out the bench she does. Yes. You know, you both contribute yeah. and everything. Yeah. But here in GH, <laughs> here in GH, <laughs> things are most of the time different. Different, yeah. Mm. Would you say that it, it was easier? Mm. Or it's been easier because you left your life out there? No interferences anyway. Yeah. Um, yes, I think so because... Um, when we got we got married in the UK, and um, from the the culture is different from here, and then we also don't have our family, and um, um, you know especially moms around. So you know that as the husband, you should be out there to support your wife. So right from you know home, I can confidently say that there was some um, particular um, food that my wife was not used to cooking and we, we, we learn how to cook it together and now she's better. She's got doctorate in it than, <laughs> than I do. Um, we, when we had from, from pregnancy to childbirth, I was there. I had to be there because there was nobody, you know, then looking after the children, you know, when you're talking about, um, men going out there and having fun, I mean, we didn't have the choice. Well, we had a choice, but it, it, it didn't look nice for you to leave your wife and go and have fun when there's a baby around and your wife has to have a me time. You know, you have to help hold the baby. Well, oh, me time. Me time. Yeah, Ghana, yeah. Your wife needs a me time. When you're... <laughs> you know, so I have to come back from work and come and look after the baby so my wife can go and work as well. You know, and when I'm looking after the baby, I'm changing nappy. I'm washing baby. I'm doing all these things because we attended antenatal um, together. And we were trained together. I mean, childbirth, I was there. You know, and they make you understand everything. Now, the culture in England is totally different from here. So, obviously, I would say that that helped me a lot. Um, education plays a big role. We were not taught at school what marriage is. 
We were not even given um, um, sex education. So we've been told that sex is wrong. You know, all we think is once you get married, it's all sex, 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 sex. So we, we connote you, that. You only have, you have the license to have sex it, when, yes, you when, when, when you get into marriage. Yes, when you get into marriage. Why are you laughing? <laughs> <laughs> so um, schools have a big role to play here. To start educating our children to understand what is sex and what is marriage. It's very important. It's not just churches. And when children, because I see young boys and girls and um, what, what they say about and their thinking about relationship, and you realize that it is based on what they have seen their parents do. So that's how they see marriage. You know, there's another aspect that is lacking in our um, education, which is critical thinking, reasoning. Because we don't teach children to critically think about things, they get into marriage and nobody knows what you're going to encounter. But when you encounter something, you should critically think about it and understand, okay, the woman is different. I'm a man, I'm different, but we are married. This is where we come together. The woman is working, doing this, so probably I need to stop this work today mm. and I'm going to cook or we're going to go out to eat. You need to be the leader. Or the consequences of your actions, whatever action, or how yes. you react to the How you people. react. In all this, how do I show respect? We're not trained. We are not taught what respect is. We know that respect is good morning, sir. Oh, fine, I mean, a boy. Yeah. Go down. <laughs> uh, sorry. And, and, you know, you get up for an adult. That isn't the only thing about respect. Respect is how you treat me, what you think about me. If you ask me to come here at two, and I'm not here at two, it's disrespect. You know, respect is how you dress, you know, how you relate to the other person, knowing that you are married. So it translates to so many things. Respect is when you got that later, you put it in the bin, you don't drop it on the floor. So there's so many things that come together that forms marriage. And we, like uh, uh, you know, uh, Pastor, it's, it's, a, it's an institution. It's like a school. So it's a big thing. And if you're getting into it as a young man and you don't understand, it's not only the men. Some of the women also don't understand it. Sometimes the other way around. Yeah. The two people must understand it takes more than counseling. Mm. That three months counseling, no, no, no. It takes you. Do men understand that whatever happens in the marriage, it is a choice. Whatever decision you make, it's a choice that you have made and therefore you need to work around it, stay through it, make it work. I think from the three quotations that I give and the other is presentation, mm -hmm. I point to one simple fact that marriage is a choice. Mm -hmm. I mean, when you can go to wedding, one of the things they say is that you are not to go to under it unadvisedly, carelessly, mm -hmm. but after careful thought. Now, as a Christian and a priest for that matter, I think I will not shy away from <clears throat> telling exactly what Christian point of view as far as marriage is concerned. I mean, and it's so clear in the Bible. When you go to Genesis chapter 2, 18 to 25 makes it clear that God identified a need mm -hmm. and said, and therefore man should not live alone. Mm -hmm. That was a need identification. And God provided a need by producing a woman from the rib of a man. So God identified a need. God provided the need. Man accepted the need by saying, this is a bone of my bone and the flesh of my flesh. Then when that is done, to taking a decision. When God provided, you must take a decision. And that's where the difference comes in. That man shall leave his mother and his father and shall be together. And the word clear means that they shall be bonded in the way that when you are separating them, it's not possible. But the, 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 this is where the, I mean, the bargaining chip is. And they were both naked. Mm. And they you felt no shame. shame. So there's nothing like boring comes in. And I keep on saying that the issue about being naked and not feeling no shame has its sociological implication, mm. has its marital implication, has its social implication, has its financial implication, it has its physiological implication. I mean, every aspect of human life you will see the nakedness of the person you've married. The reason being that you make a choice that I am marrying somebody whose taste and preferences will change in the years to come. But come what may, I will still live with that person. I mean, that is an issue. But you can't just be laissez-faire and say it is falling the woman to make it work. 
please, if it happens that way. But you see, there's a cultural issue also. Yeah. yeah. The cultural issue about the fact that the woman has been done a favor. Mm -hmm. yeah. So now she has to pay back. Yeah. And you see, this issue comes in also. Because on the wedding day, the emphasis is on the woman. Look, you know, all women take their name for men. Manageress, patroness, missus, mm. call again, anything, prophetess. This program, I'm referred to as the host, not hostess. Don't worry. <laughs> because of the platform. So I was even wondering why you brought us to the feminist platform. <laughs> Whether in a way we should be speaking so that you get a trapped. Yeah. But, <laughs> but, but you see, it's the wedding day the woman will take a name. If the man will take a name from the woman. The woman is a bride. The man is a bridegroom. Mm. So wow. the emphasis is on the yeah. woman. The man takes his recognition, his identity from the woman on that day. And that is why in other countries, they give the woman to pay dowry. Dowry is not the same as bride pride. Bride price is the amount the man pays for the woman. Dowry is the amount the woman pays for the man so that they all contribute towards the marriage in making it work. So if we are thinking that the man has given all to the woman and the woman has to come and now justify a selection as the wife, then there's a problem. So the point I want to make here is that men must know that they are head of the house. Yes. It's incumbent on them to provide financial security, social security, societal security, physiological security, I mean spiritual security, all should come from the man. And when that is given, 99% of women will positively react. Yeah. Because life is all about reciprocal living. When you give to a person, the person will positively respond. Do all these things. <laughs> and, uh, I believe that all that is done. On that note, on that note, um, I promise you that we'll do another program on who is a husband. Another program on what, who is a husband? And I, I think it's been very enlightening, very educative. And I have a couple who I'll be interviewing one of these days um, very soon. They actually broke up, they divorced for six months, and they've come back and um, they want to share their story on their experiences. So, how do you call them? Ex divorcee. Ex divorcee. <laughs> and come back. Re, 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 re I wonder how the legal is trying to speak to me. <laughs> I'll be back with a bit of me. Thank you very much. So, facts. Um, there are a lot of males out there, or there are some males out there who are married, but are not men. They are boys. They are boys because um, they haven't made the transition yet. Still married, I still want to be boys, you know, uh, want to be out there, want to have fun, want to be seen as a free atom, seen as a, a butterfly, you know, fly, whatever it is. But wifey must know that, yeah, she's the wife. After all, he married her, so she should be cool about it. But indeed, life is full of choices. Everything we do, Whatever comes our way, how we react, is a choice we make. It's a choice we make. So whether you were forced, you were whatever it is, um, you decided to be a husband. You decided to marry. No one held a gun to your head. You decided to do it. So my dear man, can you make a decision? a conscious decision to make that marriage work by playing your role, by being responsible, by respecting that woman, by loving her, by not hating her, by not abusing her, by not insulting her, by not selling her out to other women. Because as you go out there telling other women what your wife supposedly is not doing. And you're still with this woman, living under the same roof. Worst of all, we see her pregnant and having children. What does it say about you? What kind of man are you? Still living with this woman who is all that evil and negative. 
Do you realize that? It was Adam who called the human being that was created out of his rib, woman. He was the one who called her woman. Womb of a man. Or a man with a womb. So please, let's love each other. Live and let's live. Let peace reign in our homes. Let's respect each other. Let's love each other. Let's learn to communicate. God has given us wisdom. Let's apply it. Let's make good use of it. And there will be peace in our home. Until I see you same time next week, please make that conscious decision. Make that quality choice to make your marriage work. To make your home a happy home for both the man, the woman, and the children as well. Thanks for watching. See you same time next week. Bye for now. I learned that it's not only about companionship and procreation, but the most important thing you should learn is you should love your partner and stay much more committed to them. The men shouldn't think that it's just the women who, who, who make up the marriage. No, both sides should work together to succeed. Marriage is supposed to be a mutual understanding. The woman is supposed to understand that the, the man wouldn't be the same. Likewise, the man understanding that the woman would be, wouldn't be the same. And we should also know that relationship or marriage is not only about sex, sex, sex. There are a whole lot that makes the relationship and marriage to work out.